The Sunshine Coast really does remind me of Wollongong, with a long coastal strip and everybody lives about a 30 minute walk from the beach. Noosa Heads is the northern end and is a major holiday centre similar to Byron Bay, but a little bit more interesting for the guys. There's a high number of surfing, skating and clothing stores, plus ample beauty salons. It's interesting to see what happens to a society when there are no Kambalas or Loretto, and all the girls think they are cute because they're wearing fake eyelashes. It's the sort of place that even during a cold snap, the guys still wear shorts as they likely don't own any long pants. The most annoying parts of Queensland continue, with most of the roads being single lane, allowing those frustrating drivers to block everybody. And the idiot proof Queensland continues along with the lantana and brush turkeys. Upon leaving Brisbane, I was confronted with a massive rain system. It had to happen to me one day, but it really put a dampener on what I can see and do here in Noosa. While there are a number of national parks here that I wanted to see, but I was too worried about being covered in mud or swept down a flooded creek or have some soaked path collapse beneath me or an old tree branch drop from above. I had to change my weekly routine to fit around the weather and only managed to walk on the penultimate day and I had to forego the weekly clothes washing slash video editing Sunday. But look, one perfect day here in Noosa and hopefully that'll be the last of the rain until I reach the southern coast. The road to Isk through the Dangar State Forest was an absolute gem. Even in the rain, with all the washed out debris covered roads, I still enjoyed every minute. There are sections along the Makar Creek Road in the Kringai Chase National Park and lower sections of the Royal National Park just north of Wollongong that match, but the Mount Nebo Road is some 60 kilometres of absolute riding pleasure. I could have just used this footage for the entire video. Heading to the Sunshine Coast via the inland route had its advantages. Most of the rain was on the coastal strip, and while the roads were still wet, there wasn't the added discomfort of water dribbling down the back of my neck. Esk is a small country town with a caravan park full of impoverished artists. It, it has a non-reviewable bakery where I've got a forgettable pie and flat white. They still don't just do coffee in these small towns, and I'm really missing my mocha pot. Staying with a first generation Australian Italian grandma is a bit of a different experience. I think we can all associate that old dogmatic Italian male, but fail to realise Italian women are just as passionate about their old ways. You know, I haven't slept in a single bed since I was like 15, and I have no memory of ever boiling water on a stove. I guess that these are the memorable experiences I was hoping to obtain during this trip. It's been rain on top of rain. I only booked a week here in Noosa Heads, as I was expecting this to be the dry season up north, and without the warning to book two weeks as I did down south. Life on the road, you can only play the average and roll with the punches. The service worked out thanks to the nice people at Moto One Motorcycles in Maroochydore. Some $1,500 for a major service and new tyres, but I'm all good for the next 10,000 kilometres which will get me through to Perth. Riding in rain mode does consume more petrol reducing the distances between petrol stations. This is something I need to be aware of when calculating my fuel stops. Right now I can't notice the difference between the 120 and 130 tyre, since I've only ridden some 30 kilometres in the rain, stuck behind a Tesla. Once I knock the shine off them and find a bright dry patch of road, I'll see if I can spot any difference. I don't know if I should take the advice of the tyre guy and try overinflating the front tyre to get the extra distance, as I think that'll sacrifice braking. Either way, I'm pretty confident that I'll get the 10,000 hassle 3 kilometres that I need. Oh, and a tip for you all. I realised that I should have left the spare key with my uncle instead of packing it away with the rest of my stuff in storage. That way if I lose the key, I can get him to easily send my spare. Starlink has released an updated coverage map where they'll extend coverage up to Mackay in the next three months. Some three months short of when I could have used it in Rockhampton and they plan to cover the rest of Australia beginning sometime early next year, some six months shy of when I could have used it, as I reckon it'll take about three months to cross the top end. Elon time means I shouldn't expect these services any earlier than these estimates. Here in the Sunshine Coast, I was able to fire up the dish and check out if it was at least still working. Although it struggled to start up with all this rain, the first hour had about a third downtime, and that reduced to about a sixth over the second hour. 
It did over time learn its environment and settle down to a more usable connection. For now, there's no reason to ditch the dish. So I'll live in hope that it'll become more useful once I get to the west coast. You know I'd hate to admit it, but Sydney really has sold its soul by selling so much of itself to foreigners. Being in Queensland, it reminded me of what it was like growing up in the 80s in the eastern suburbs. Up here, everybody drives a Japanese car, eats Vietnamese food and enjoys a Thai massage. Down there, everyone's just a slave to their mortgage. After 10 years in Linfield, where everyone else had either bought their home during the 80s or inherited it, it was nice being amongst people my own age and in a similar stage of life. With all this rain, my cousin who lives out near Gympie and I were unable to find the time to meet up. I guess we'll need to wait another 25 years before fate brings us together again. On a positive side, DJI have brought out their new drone, the Mini 3 Pro, and I've managed to have one shipped to my other cousin in Cairns. I managed to get things to line up with the bike service before leaving Greater Brisbane, so hopefully I can manage to get things to line up with the new drone. Next stop is Rockhampton with lunch in Bundaberg. I'm hoping the sunshine will stretch out for tomorrow as well. I'm trying to pack up tonight so I'll get an early start in the morning in case Gympie is still flooded and it turns out to be a very long day. The hops from now on will get larger than the last few as I'm aiming for over 500 kilometres each. There are far less people between here and Perth. If you want more current updates on my trip then try following me on Instagram with the handle for Dallas C. Thanks for following my adventures around Australia and remember to go out there and do something to enjoy your day. Thank mm -hmm. you.